Hi traders, Gavin McMaster here from Options Trading IQ, doing a video collaboration with Bar Chart. And today we're going to be looking at Bar Chart XL and some of the really cool features available in that product um, and how you might like to use them to help you with your trading. Before we do that, just a reminder that everything discussed is for educational purposes, is general in nature and does not take into account your personal circumstances. So did you know you can now unlock the power of barchart.com in Microsoft Excel? You can now access all the bar chart tools you love and more in one place. Let's take a look at a couple of ways these tools can be used. Firstly, implied volatility analysis. When trading options, it's crucial to understand if implied volatility is high or low by historical standards. We can measure this as IV percentile or IV rank in a range between 0% and 100%. We talk about that a lot um, in the articles that I write on bar chart in terms of looking to sell volatility when the IV percentile is high and looking to buy or go long volatility when the IV percentile is low. We can get that information on bar chart, but sometimes it's nice to have a visual representation of this as well. Let's take a look at how this can be done in bar chart Excel. So here we can see a really nice graph of the implied volatility for Apple. We can see the, the 50 delta IV in orange here with the historical volatility in blue. And we can see a pretty clear pattern that when volatility gets down to the 20s, the low 20s in Apple, that's a good time to be buying volatility. And when, when it gets up into that 40 range uh, and above 40, that's a good time to potentially sell volatility on Apple. Let's quickly take a look at how we can add some more stocks into our Excel file. And we can set up a watch list of stocks and, and quickly view all these volatility charts for our main stocks in our watch list. If we go to bar chart, volatility, and we type in our ticker, double click and we want to select implied volatility index. We want to have 30 day IV and we're just going to deselect the expiration. So it's just going to give us our general IV. We can add historical volatility here if we want. We can overlay option volume. Uh, for now, I'm just going to put none and then insert. So there we can see our Tesla. IV chart comes in really quickly and we can potentially just have a bunch of these set up in our Excel file and really quickly view um, the IV for Tesla, any, any stock in our watch list basically. The next tool we're going to look at is called Max Payne and the Max Payne theory claims that as option expiration approaches, the stock price will get pushed towards the price at which the greatest number of options in terms of dollar value will expire worthless. Stock prices will gravitate toward the price that will cause, cause both call and put buyers the most pain since their options would expire worthless at that max pain price. Thus, max pain is the price at which the option holders would lose the most and option writers or sellers would profit the most. Remember that large institutions are generally net sellers of options, so they stand to make the most from a stock pinning the max pain strike. This is generally going to be the strike price with the greatest number of open contracts. Um, but keep in mind, Max Payne is only a theory and can't be relied on to work all of the time, but it does work sometimes. However, the Max Payne theory is supported by the fact that there are very large institutional option sellers who may have the ability to manipulate stock prices. We can use Bar Chart Excel to quickly view the Max Payne area for any stock. So here we have some information that's been brought into our Excel file. And it basically shows us the notional value of all the open puts and calls for a certain stock price. We can see the puts in yellow here. As the stock price trades lower, those puts will explode in value and be worth lots and lots of money. And as the stock rises, the call options will be worth lots of money and the puts will be worth very little. What we're looking for is where the graph is kind of at the lowest point where the puts and the calls will expire for the lowest notional value. And that is around sort of 190 um, around this area here. You can see that here. It actually gives us our max pain number right up there so we can quickly see it very easily. But you can see it graphically as well, which is kind of nice, um, right around that 185 to 190 strike for the March 17th expiration. So we could potentially take that information and say, right, I'm going to think about a 
butterfly spread centered at that 190 strike because I think Tesla's going to pin that 190 strike on March 17th, which is going to be the max pain level for any option buyer. The next really cool thing we can do in Bar Chart Excel is looking at the volatility term structure. And that refers to the varying levels of implied volatility based on different expiry dates. It can be a little bit complicated if you're new to this stuff, but before we dive into it, we need to understand two key terms. Those are contango and backwardation, and they're key terms that come from the futures market. Contango refers to a situation where the price of a commodity is higher in the future compared to the current spot price. The main reason for this is what's called the cost of carry. If you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Let's say that I need 100 barrels of oil in three months' time. I could buy the barrels today for $70, but then I have to pay storage costs for three months until I need it. So that's the cost of carry. In this example, I might be willing to pay $72 to take delivery in three months rather than today so that I don't need to pay for that storage. So that's the typical structure we're going to see in the futures market is where spot price is low and then it goes up gradually uh, the further out in time we go because of that cost of carry. The same principle can work for stocks as well. In most cases, the further out in time we go, the higher the implied volatility. And that's generally because the longer there is to expiration, the more chance there is that something bad could happen during that time. Stocks generally sit in contango, uh, particularly when we're in a bull market. Um, unless there's a panic occurring, which drives up the implied volatility on short-term options. That's when the opposite scenario can occur, and that's called backwardation. So backwardation is when short-dated volatility is higher than longer-dated volatility. Let's look at how we can easily view the volatility term structure in bar chart Excel. So here we can see a couple of graphs of, for Apple and Tesla. We're looking at their term structure. Apple, there's a little bit of noise here. It's a little bit higher in the front than in the back. Um, but actually, if you look at the axis, this is fairly flat because these are all fairly close together, around 28 and a half up to 29 and a half. So pretty flat structure. An interesting thing with Tesla at the moment is there's quite a lot of backwardation. Um, maybe that's because there's big events coming up at the moment uh, in the short term, um, earnings or um, investor day, things like that. So you can see we've got the short-term options up around 70% implied volatility. And then if we go further out in time um, to the really long-term leap options, implied volatility is at about 55. So typically we're going to see a stock in contango, but what we're seeing with Tesla at the moment is it's in backwardation. Now we could maybe take that information and think about maybe a calendar spread where we're selling options in the short term and we're buying the longer term options that have the cheaper volatility. Let's take a look at how we can quickly add another stock here in Bar Chart Excel. So we'll just type in our ticker, double click, and we'll say term structure. I'm just going to deselect all of these. And on the expiration, I'm going to choose all of the monthly expirations. I'm not too concerned about the weekly ones. I want to just look at the main monthly ones and insert. And there we go. Pretty quickly you can see that. Again, similar to Apple, uh, a little bit backward dated, a little bit of noise at the front here, but overall fairly flat. Uh, but you can see that information comes into Excel really quickly. Um, and we can potentially really quickly view the term structure um, of a number of different stocks um, in our Excel file, uh, which I don't think you can really do on any other website. So it's a really handy feature um, of Bar Chart Excel. One other thing that we can look at is what's called the implied volatility curve or smile, implied volatility smile. This is just looking at one particular expiration date, in this case, uh, March 17th. And what we're looking at is the implied volatility at the middle here, the 50 delta uh, calls or puts. And then we're looking at the rise in implied volatility out into the uh, deep out of the money puts. So there's quite a big smile here with Tesla where the implied volatility for out of the money options is very high compared to the at the money options. A little bit similar with Apple, but much less pronounced. 
typically we're going to see out of the money puts um, with higher implied volatility because people are willing to pay a bit more for that sort of crash protection, which bids up the prices of those puts, which means higher implied volatility. But here we're seeing some really pronounced um, skew here with Tesla, and we could potentially create a trade structure around that where uh, we buy some of the cheaper options here and we sell some of the uh, more expensive further out of the money options. Here's a quick example that I was just looking at where we're looking at buying the at the money option or close to at the money, about a 45 delta option. Notice that the implied volatility is about 61% and then selling two of the further out of the money options at an eight delta where the volatility is much higher at 66.76. So we're buying low volatility, we're selling high volatility. And you can think of volatility a little bit like a stock. You wanna buy low and sell high or you want to sell high and buy back low. Um, it's the same kind of principle. So here we've structured a trade uh, called a ratio spread. We've got a big profit zone on the downside. Uh, it is negative delta, but we're taking advantage of that skew by selling those expensive options. And if that matched with our directional opinion that we thought Tesla might come down into that zone, that becomes a really attractive uh, trade. If we're not so bearish um, and we want to still take advantage of that skew, we could do what's called a delta hedge where we've currently got a combined delta of negative 29. We could hedge some of that delta by buying some of the underlying stock and that flattens out our T plus zero line a little bit, it reduces our delta down to negative nine now. We've still got a pretty decent profit zone down here, um, but much less uh, risk if the stock rallies up. Uh, because of the, the bought shares that we've got uh, will help hedge that upside if Tesla does happen to move higher. So a couple of interesting ideas there. Um, I definitely encourage you to check out Bar Chart Excel. There's plenty of information here once you sign in. Um, lots of different things you can do in terms of volatility and skew. Lots of You can add all your typical um, screeners that you can get on barchart.com. You can view them all in Excel in the one place, which is really handy. Um, ETF screeners, option screeners, um, historical prices, lots of different things you can bring in, ETF lists, stock lists. It's a really, really cool tool and I encourage you to check it out. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, otherwise, best of luck with your trading.